for about 27,000 light years from the center of the galaxy. That means that if we travel to the speed of light in 27,000 years, if we wanted to, we could go into the incredibly nuclear, dangerously uh, catastrophic hub of our galaxy. When you go out of the Mil and look at the Milky Way sky tonight, or some moonless night, and you see the Milky Way overhead in the summertime, you're actually looking toward the Sagittarius arm, toward the center of the galaxy. Notice this dark, what looks to be a lane. It looks like a place that doesn't have stars. It, that actually is stuff. That's dark dust. If it weren't for that dust, life on Earth would be impossible. That dust absorbs tremendous amounts of energy coming from the center of the nuclear forces within the center of the galaxy. So we've got 250 billion galaxies, and again, this is the low end, and 250 billion suns in each galaxy. How do you know what stars are stars that are going to have planets that can support life? We're going to start eliminating things now. We're going to get down to this 5%. What's special about our own sun? Well, it turns out that our own sun is really not special at all. It's very average. So we, we use what we have in any laboratory situation. You use what you have to make assessments and studies and, and, and ultimately uh, hypotheses. Our, our sun is now in mid-age, about four and a half to five billion years old. So it's a middle-aged star, which is good. It's about a normal star, output, energy, so forth. And it's also a normal size star. Now it looks tiny here. Here it is way over here. See that little tiny dot? That is the size of our sun relative to other suns out there. Look at Antares, or that's Arcturus. Look at Arcturus over here. If our sun was the size of Arcturus, the planets Venus and Mercury would be inside the glowing surface of our own sun. So thank goodness our sun is an average size. As it turns out, most of the planets that have been found circling stars are circling stars about the same size as our own sun. And the temperature of the star is very important. Color and temperature go together with stars. Uh, this is like, a, let's just say, a campfire. Uh, let's say we're outside and we build a big campfire. If you blow on the fire and you get it really stoked well enough, you can get flames that shoot out the top that are blue. Those are your hottest flames. Same thing with a star. Blue stars have the hottest, hottest output. Um, um, uh, the, the misconception is that like the red coals down in the bottom of the fire are the hottest. That's not true. Not until you blow on them and turn them into blue flames. The red coals are the coolest. Our sun, as you notice, is right in the middle. And it's a yellow star, as we well know. We could have a blue sun. We could have a red sun. We have a yellow sun. So, once again, we're eliminating odds. We're looking at stars that are mid-aged, small by comparison, but it turns out that most stars in our Milky Way galaxy are about the same size as our own sun. So now we've made all this stuff, and we've made stars with, with possible planets that can go around them. What does it take to make an Earth? So let's look at the actual sciences involved. 